In this video, we're going to be discussing the anterior shear test, which is a special test used in the assessment of anterior lumbar instability. To begin, the patient's going to be positioned in sideline, facing the PT, with their hips at approximately 60 to 90 degrees of flexion, and their knees at 90 degrees of flexion. For the anterior shear test, it does not matter which side lying they're in, left or right. In other words, it doesn't matter which side is in contact with the table and which is facing the ceiling. For the purposes of this video, I'm going to be demonstrating this special test on L4 and L5. But understand you should also perform this on L3 and L4, L2 and L3, and so on and so forth. Basically adjacent lumbar vertebrae. My cranial hand, which is designated in red, is going to be on the L4 spinous process. It is going to stabilize L4 and hold it firmly and prevent L4 from moving. My caudal hand, which is designated in green, is going to be on the L5 spinous process and also the L4, L5 interspinous space. This hand is going to hold L5 loosely and is actually used to palpate the movement of L5 relative to L4. You can see there the vertebrae are already labeled. My cranial hand is going to be firmly stabilizing L4. My caudal hand right there is going to be loosely palpating L5. And I'm going to be attempting to detect movement of L5 relative to L4. So L4 needs to be stabilized firmly. Once the PT is stabilizing and palpating the correct vertebrae, the PT then firmly presses their anterior proximal thigh against the patient's knee. And from there, the PT applies a strong force through the long axis of the patient's femur and attempts to move the caudal vertebra, which is L5, posteriorly relative to the cranial vertebra, which in this case is L4. This is what this would look like from the side. I'm putting my proximal anterior thigh against the patient's knee and I'm going to drive a force through the long axis of their femur like that. And I'm feeling for excessive movement of L5 relative to L4. Again, remember we need to stabilize L4 firmly. If a person does not have anterior lumbar instability at this segment, you shouldn't feel anything significant or noticeable at your fingertips there. A positive anterior shear test would be indicated by excessive posterior translation of the caudal vertebra, L5, of course posteriorly, relative to the cranial vertebra, L4. Now due to the fact that there's nothing to grab onto, we have no way of directly pulling L4 anteriorly. However, L5 moving posteriorly relative to L4 is the same relative movement as L4 moving anteriorly relative to L5. Right here is an exaggerated view of what you'd actually be feeling in a positive anterior shear test. Again, we're stabilizing L4 firmly and loosely palpating L5 to feel for that excessive movement of L5 posteriorly relative to L4. So the anterior shear test is an indirect measure of excessive anterior movement of the cranial vertebra relative to the caudal vertebra, in this case L5 relative to L4. And again, if somebody tests positive here, that would indicate anterior instability at that segment. Hopefully you can see here in this positive test that when L5 moves posteriorly relative to L4, L4 is now anterior compared to L5. And so in the anterior shear test, by directly moving the caudal vertebra posteriorly, it allows us to indirectly assess anterior movement of the cranial vertebra, the same relative movement. Thank you for all your support. Be sure to check out my Instagram for cool science and not science stuff.